A company with a vision to transport people at near supersonic speed is announcing what it calls an historic achievement. Hyperloop One is building what could be the next mode of high-speed transportation. Passengers will be loaded onto pods that will travel through a tube at 700 miles an hour. That is faster than the speed of a Boeing passenger jet. First on CBS This Morning, here's a look at the first private test of the Hyperloop. It took place in the Nevada desert. Three, two... One fire. The company now says it has the first full scale <laughs> Hyperloop in the world. Hyperloop One's goal is to have three systems in service by 2021. Co founders Josh Geigel and Shervin Peshavar are here. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Pretty exciting. It was a high five a day over at your place. <laughs> yes. uh, um, people have been looking into this to, to, to popularize and mainstream this form of transportation for a while. Why do you think you have it right now? Well, uh, we have it because we did it. Uh, we've wor been working so hard, Josh Geigel, my co founder, and I, and the whole team in two and a half years from idea. To reality, Hyperloop is real. The video that you saw is our Kitty Hawk moment. We take a lot of inspiration mm -hmm. from the Wright brothers um, and wanted to show the world that it works. And this is the first full-scale Hyperloop in the world. The structure weighs two million pounds. Uh, we did the levitation, the propulsion, and the full-scale vacuum, as if you're creating your own sky in the tube, flying at 200,000 feet. It'll be the safest, cleanest, fastest form of transportation in the world. Shervin, I love the, the Kitty Hawk moment that you explained. And Josh, tell us the experience. What excites me about it is that you can go from L.A. to San Francisco in 30 minutes. Yeah. But why should I not be terrified at being in a tube underground? So, I mean, we get in a tube every day. We got in a tube yesterday to come to either on here on the subway or yep. on a plane. And, you know, being in, inside this tunnel or the tube is ours, as we call it, we don't have any real concerns about the, in the event of emergency. So you can basically get out if there's an emergency, just like you would in a tunnel, and you're not at 30,000 feet. So you have the ability not to... Fall I can get out and go where, Josh? I'm underground. Where am I going? Just like when you drive in a tunnel or in your subway, there's emergency uh -huh. evac ports and, uh -huh. and whatnot. So. But a subway's Gosh. not going 700 miles an hour. Yeah. 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 Right? <laughs> but we're able to slow down. We have emergency braking techniques, things that we've been testing, and that allows us, in the event that something were to happen, you're able to slow down safely. Sherman, I know you guys have an ambitious goal of creating three functioning hyperloop units in like four years. How, who pays for it? Right, that's a great question, Nora. Uh, we need the support of people and governments around the world. You can't build Hyperloops uh, uh, around the world without the support of governments. It, you, we think of this as a form of transportation, a uh, new form of transportation like broadband. So uh, high-speed transportation will be very similar to that uh, in the same way that governments adopted broadband around the world and mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, we need their support to do it, and we're having amazing uh, contacts and, and communications well, and partnerships with governments already. I mean, you need the land, right? That's right. The, the, the uh, right-of-ways are extremely important, um, and building new infrastructure for the world is so important. We're all stuck in traffic. It causes so much pain and, and wastes so much time for people. Speeding things up, making cities into metro stops, being able to go, uh, like Gail said, from uh, SF to LA in 30, 35 minutes, is game changing. It changes the way we think about where we live, where we work. Washington to New York, do you see that sort of happening? Absolutely. The, the Northeast Corridor is a, is a huge uh, focus for us, uh, and being able to go that fast will allow everyone to kind of spread around, live and work wherever they want, and it'll change the region. What, what about the rest of the country? Because so much of this conversation sometimes just focuses on the east and west coast. I mean, the middle of the country. I mean, you, you want to bring this everywhere. Yeah, uh, there's, there's a few spots that we've been looking in Texas as well as Florida, part of our Hyperloop One Global Challenge, which was looking at different areas around the world and in the last really three or four months engaged with quite a few of the local governments on where these potential projects can be. So what are you worried about, Shervin? Listen, I know you love your mom, your sister, your favorite daughter, nephew Donovan's in the, in the room. Sure. There has to be something that you think, well, we're kind of worried about this or this isn't going to plan. Well, I, there has to be some concerns. This sounds great. I love all the high five, Kitty Hawk, yeah. all that. But what are you concerned about now? My, uh, that's a great question. Um, the number one concern is, uh, is to make this idea a reality. And this was a huge step in showing the world today 
on this show that this 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 is real. We've done it, yeah. and now is to really go to the next stage of, as Nora said, connecting with the governments and and actually building working hyperloops around the world. The people have the courage to put this in place. Yes, to move courage forward on yeah. changing transportation in America. That's right. I think if you had the chance to be around when the Wright brothers tested at Kitty yes, Hawk, like true. this is what, what we had. So it's really, for an engineer, it's super exciting. Well, it's exciting I'm to watch. Super excited for those of us that travel a lot. Yes, yes. Yeah, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so Thanks much. Again. Thank you. Which is all of us. You know, yeah. everybody's traveling <laughs> yes. a lot to and from work. Yeah, safety and speed, you can't beat that. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Josh Geigel and Sherwin Shavar.